So, uh, everybody, welcome back to Rock Titan. I'm Scotty J, and as you can see on the screen, we've got one of the greatest guitarists on the planet Earth, Bumblefoot. And uh, we're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff, but uh, most exciting, I guess, is uh, a new album that he's got coming out February 16th with Art of Anarchy, the third album. Bumblefoot, how you doing, man? Yes. Yes. I'm good. I'm just making sure that my system here is not... Yeah, enough. Mr. Okay. Producer. Oh, I am. I'm good. Yes, yes, we are. We we got through it all. But uh, yeah, so we were just uh, talking a little bit ago. You are once again working with your man Jeff Scott Soto, and uh, you know, obviously, everybody knows your collaboration together with Sons of Apollo. And I guess one of the first things I want to ask you about Art of Anarchy with this new lineup that you have, which is awesome, by the way, and everybody vilified, their single vilified is already out there, an official music video with Cuba Gooding Jr. And part of the setting is from the movie Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. Freaking awesome, dude. That was great, great work. Cool. Yeah, man. But uh, so I guess the fact that you had worked with you know, Soto on Sons of Apollo, you've got that familiarity there. But what made you want to recruit him for Art of Anarchy? Or was it you or, or was it your other partners, you know, the Vada brothers that, um, you know, said, you know what, let's go get Soto. How did that happen? Well, speaking of the whole Joker theme and, and Jeff and everything, it all kind of came together. Uh, just it evolved into this. So what happened was in 2019, John, the guitar player, John Voda, he got sick and he was getting sicker and sicker and doctors couldn't figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. And his whole body was just shutting down slowly over the course of months. He was dying. He was like dying slowly and they could not figure out what the hell was going on. And all he would do is just lie in bed, playing guitar, watching movies. And he would watch the Joker movie over and over and over mm. with the guitar in his hand and just play along with the movie. And, uh, you know, it was pretty dark time for the dude. Yeah. And eventually they figured it out. They you know, gave him, you know, massive treatment and everything. And he, he slowly came back. And at that point, he's like, let's do a third album. And the, just with the guitar in his hand, playing along to the Joker movie over and over, he ended up writing riffs and things that stuck and became the song Vilified. So that is what started this third album to happen again. So during the pandemic, like the second half of 2020, uh, John and Vince, the drummer, they're twin brothers, they playing together their whole lives and, and I've been producing their stuff and engineering them and just know them over 25 years. Uh, they would come over every Friday and we would just make a song. And we did that for a like good half a year and have two albums worth of music. And during that time, uh, Jeff Soto, he was saying to me, you know, if you guys just had me from day one, would have saved you a lot of headache. <laughs> right. And he's right. I mean, Jeff is the greatest guy to be in a band with. He really is. He is the opposite of the stereotypical nightmare singer. He's the opposite of that. Um, great guy. He's a friend. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff together outside of bands, you know, just acoustic things and stuff like that. And he's just wonderful. So he mentioned it more than once. I was like, you know, let me bring this up to the Voda brothers, John and Vince. Right. So I said, look, you know, Jeff said that, that if you're looking for singer number three, and before I could even finish the sentence, they were like, you said, because <laughs> they love the guy. They're huge fans of his. And, and there, no question, if he wanted in, we know it would work. I've worked with the guy for years, and, and just everyone knows how great he is. He, Without that, without me having to say a word about his, you know, just workability and, and band member, team player kind of thing. So there you go. So we would send music to him and, and he would just write. And the album came together. So because of the way everything 
sort of evolved with this near-death mortality looming kind of thing with watching the Joker movie just to keep saying and playing guitar to it and all of that. That's why Vilified was chosen as the first single and why there's all the references to the Joker because it just had such a big impact on on everyone. Right. And that's why we filmed it right on those Joker stairs where he Dude. did his thing. We filmed right on those same stairs in the Bronx. That's the Shakespeare awesome. Shakespeare Street stairs, yeah. What a spot. What a spot. And then having Cuba Gooding Jr., you know, a guy of his magnitude in Hollywood, um, you know, be like the main actor in it. How, how did that happen? You guys friends with him? Like, how, what went into oh. that character selection? Our director, Dale Rage Restigini, he's phenomenal. And he, we've been working together since the very beginning of the band. And uh, he reached out to him and wow. said yes. So that's how a lot of things happen with this. We just... That's how a lot of things happen in life. You just reach out to people. Sure. And if they're interested, they'll say yes. Like, did you know that in this song, all those narrations, those news broadcast narrations, is yeah. Jeff Tate doing those. Get out of here. Yeah, listen back. You'll, you'll be like, of course it is. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to go back and watch it now. Jeff's a nice dude, man. I really enjoyed awesome. hanging out with him. Great, great guy. Wow, that's so cool. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow little things to the story behind this song well it's deep i mean it's a really deep yeah. song you know and, and i mean i know that there's you know it, it's all about mental health and i loved how in the description of the video on youtube everybody go check it out um you know it, it, mental health is is nothing to ignore we've lost too many people too young uh too many magnificent people you know especially you know when it comes to our veterans and you know all our men and women that you know come over from the field of battle once they're done with active duty it's just like you know well, what do i do with my life now and we lose so many of them and you know of course you know so many musicians that have struggled with it um you know wyland i guess is a question mark as to whether or not that was ultimately kind of what led down the path of you know, how that all unfolded, which I thought was really sad. But uh, and then, of course, Scott Stapp, you know, and I mean, he doesn't even hide it. You know, he's been very, very forthright, you know, about his mental health. And, and, and I just have to give kudos to him, you know, for really acknowledging it and making the comeback that he's made. So, I mean, is, is that, you know, a particular subject that's been near and dear to your heart for any particular reason? Oh, sure. I'm a fucking head case. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, so, yes. No, seriously, I have dealt with suicidal depression my whole damn life. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, more people have. If you, know, if you asked everybody, have you ever dealt with this? More people than not will say yes as far as anything. You know, life is tough. It is. It is. Yeah. And I'm just so glad that the stigma has really kind of been taken off it. Because I think this isn't anything new. Right. It's always been an issue, but I think there's always been this stigma attached to it where people were so afraid to admit it, you know, because if they. Yeah, like it's it, a sign of weakness or something or it's like, no, it's not. It's part of being human and we are all just a work in progress and you got to do the fucking work. Yeah. yeah. And you got to acknowledge it and, and move forward and do something about it. Right on, man. Right on. Yeah. So Let There Be Anarchy is the full album. That's going to be yes. coming out in early 2024. Um, man, that's exciting. Uh, how many tracks are on that? Ten. Okay. Even though you said, I think, earlier that you've got like a couple albums worth, yeah? Was there anything you oh, had to leave on the cutting room floor? Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. What did you just ask? No, like, was there any music that you left on the cutting room floor, basically, you oh, know, saying, all right. Oh, whole album worth, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So would it be safe to say, then, that this is kind of like a, a teaser, maybe, of what's to come, and, and maybe we, we might see another follow-up, Art of Anarchy, in, like, 2025? I hope so. It's the kind of thing where it's, you know, it's a team effort between sure. us and the rest of the world. Right. Uh, right. If people support the band and the band can continue if people come to shows and the band can be touring and it really we need them and every band does sure. the band that has nothing without the people that give the support they are everything and it's up to us to give them something they want 
So as long as that happens, that symbiotic thing, then everything can keep going. Yeah. Right on. Now, because you've got your third album coming out with Art of Anarchy and you've got four albums worth of material, and I'm sure oh. it wouldn't take Jeff any well, level of effort at all, you know. To, no, Jeff uh, could write a song a day and it's like, Right. Yeah, he's he's a writing machine. But he could have the first two albums, you know, in his catalog in no time. So are there any thoughts of touring in 2024 as Art of Anarchy? Now that, you oh, know, yeah. COVID is a memory, an ancient memory now. No more lockdown. Touring is wide it's a, open. It's a lingering stink. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> but there's no so, lockdown. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's like I, I know so many people that have it right now. Uh, Me too. My son, but, my son has it right now. My uh, son has it. Yeah, yeah. So that's the lingering stink. Yes, the lingering stink. Yeah. So yes, there was life before COVID, and now there is life with it and continuing with it until who knows. We're knowing. How, uh, we're, we're learning how to live gotta, it, right? It just gotta roll with whatever, whatever life brings, and just. It's out of our hands. So, yes, we plan to tour. We want to tour. Uh, we have a great booking agent that's looking into stuff and seeing what will be possible for next year so that we can go out and and bring this to everybody face-to-face, -face, which is a whole other experience, you know. Like, you know, when you see a band uh, and they're raw and they're hungry and they're out to just – you know, just win the crowd over and you, you get that fire and everything. And, and this being the new lineup and a new album after years, that fire is there. So we want to get the fuck out. That's yeah. awesome, man. I love hearing that. I love hearing it. So Bumblefoot, the fact that you've now got Soto and Art of Anarchy, does that impact anything you guys might have been doing with Sons of Apollo? Was that ever even a well, thought? Like, if if you get him involved in Art of Anarchy, does that change anything with Sons of Apollo? At this point, I have to say no. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> you know. Because you know something. You know something's going on. Okay. Well, well, actually, it's the way I look at it is, is like, you know, Sons of Apollo has splintered off into other things. Right. We right. got three albums out of it, two studio albums, and, and the whole live... Uh, love Div, the ancient Roman theater thing that we did. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that we got to do that much. Yeah. All right. Now I know you got to get going. You got to make your media rounds. And again, everybody, we are here with the legendary Bumblefoot. So thank you so much again for your time, man. I mean, I love talking well, thank to you. you. Absolutely. I, I could talk to you all day long. One of the things that really caught me about your double neck guitar. Um, because I don't know a whole lot of musicians that have gone fretless. You know, we're, we're, we're all friends here with Tony Franklin, the fretless monster on bass. But I can't yes, honestly, it. right? I can't honestly say I've ever seen anyone play a fretless guitar. Now, only the top neck is fretless. The bottom is not. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, for, for you as a musician. Now, I know Tony's story as far as why he likes to play the fretless bass. But, uh... What made you want to go fretless on top and 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 fret on the bottom? Ah, well, I guess the question: Why do I even have two necks on a guitar and one is fretless? Or do you care more like why is one on the bottom? And one? Well, you guys got. You, I mean, when you look at some of the musicians out there, it's funny because all right, so we got a mutual friend, Vinnie Moore, and we had talked in the past about you know his guitar playing and everything, and and why well, doesn't he get you know as extravagant maybe as some other guitarists like Michelangelo Badio out there who has four, you know, and it's just like <laughs> oh my god, you know, how do you do that? So guitarists of your level of your magnificence, you know, can kind of do things a little out of the ordinary, which I would say going fretless is definitely out of the ordinary. But so, so is it, is what, what is it about the, the, the sound, the music that you would play on, on, on the top neck versus the bottom just for guitar lovers well, out there? Okay. Well, I used to build my own guitars. I'll just give a little background. Okay. And I was horrible at it. I created these monstrosities that were just awful and, and they were just hideous. Uh, it was like the human centipede of guitars. It was just this <laughs> fucked up thing and, and shit and all. And 
Yeah, but I would experiment with different fretboards. Like I had one where instead of a, you know having frets, it had like a bunch of shaved down coins. So it was almost like this metal imperfect screwed up neck with like four dollars and sixty three cents worth of coins just put into it. Uh, it was horrible. But this company Vigier, this Vigier, V I G I E R, with a little yeah. V on there. Yeah. And I hooked up with them in 1997. They're a French company. I was doing uh, a clinic tour out there and I was making my own guitars and I wasn't looking for a guitar endorsement. Okay. But one of their reps brought a guitar to the clinic and said, just try this. And I didn't even want to try it. He was just insisting, like, just try the damn thing. And I played it and it played so much better than my own guitars. I was like, you know what? I should let the experts do this and yeah, just not try and do everything and know when to defer to people that are smarter and better than me. So I started playing Vigier guitars in 1997 and I didn't even know they made fretless guitars until we went to a NAM show the following year and I saw it hanging up. Oh, and my eyes lit up. I was like, why didn't you tell me you make this? Wow. And I remember Patrice, the guy who owns a company, he just let out this frustrated sigh and just looked up at the sky. Like, he's like, in the past 18 years of this company existing, we have sold four of them. Oh my Nobody God. wants these things. Wow. It's like, I do, give me one. <laughs> and immediately just started playing and started Man. writing with it. And it just became part of what I do. Right. And a bigger and bigger part. Yeah. So what would happen is when I would do live shows, I would either have to play a whole song on a fretless that included fretless, or I'll leave it out and play the fretted. Okay. And I had to choose one or the other. And I was like, I can't do this. I need to be able to access both. Right. And talked about different ideas like retractable frets or a flippable neck that's fretless on one side, fretted on the other, oh. and all kinds of stuff. But it just seemed the most sensible to just have a, a double neck sure. where one is fretted, one is fretless. Now, what is the difference is, let's see, do I have sound here? Turn this on. No, I have no, well, maybe if I plug in the guitar. <laughs> so, there's your producer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing this whole <laughs> plugging in. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Awesome. No, okay. All right, we got you. On a fretted neck, you have the little bumpies. And you have, and they give you the exact point where it's almost like going from a piano you know, key to key. Where on a fretless neck, it's more like a cello or a violin, where it's just. Okay. All right. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, it's also similar to. Like if you're going to play a slide on a fretted neck, it's where you're not pressing the string against the frets, and you're just you have this this sort of non not so porous material with an edge to it that will allow the string to vibrate from whatever point you touch this to the string. So you can the same. All right, so everybody, we're getting a guitar lesson from Bumblefoot at the same time. How do you like them apples? So you know. With this, you don't need the slide. Your fingertips are the slide. Right. Okay. Interesting. And you can also do not just things that are this. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure if that was actually playing right now, we'd be blowing out the mics. So, yeah, yeah, but no, man, that's really cool. That is really, really cool. Yeah, I was curious about that because, again, I, I was never familiar with any, you know, fretless guitar bass players until I met, you know, Tony Franklin. Then it's like, wow, man, that's, that's pretty wild. And then I saw you had that double neck guitar, and I'm like, God dang, man, not only is it beautiful, but that's that's so cool. That's cool that you do that. All right, I know you got to get going. I'm going to let you go at this point, I promise, <laughs> except I saw that you're going to be commentating, I think, on an Axis TV show, a new Axis TV show. Did I see you're going to yes, be hosting it's that? Cool. 100 Greatest Rock Stars, and no, I am not on that list. Uh, I am. <laughs> That's messed up. I am one of the people that is, you know, going to be the little bubble talking about, you know, whether it's Jimi Hendrix or Gene Simmons or whoever it is. And, and yeah, they gave me a list of 10 different people. Well, they gave me a list of 100 and said, pick 10. And I flew out there and, and we shot all day and, and just talked about these 
10 amazing, inspirational, uh, different rock stars. So I'm going to be one of the commentators on that. One more thing I'm going to talk about with this. Is oh, yes. I keep using two things. Okay. So this one, I keep pulling down to get a lot of... Okay. And this one, I don't keep in that tuning. So that's another thing that I did with Sons of Apollo and with Art of Anarchy, uh, is I have riffs that I need the other guitar for because they're in different tunings. Right on. And they just have a different vibe to them. Like they have that slidey, growly kind of vibe with a, a fretless, where not so much and just a little more normal with the fretted. Yeah. Right on. Oh my God, that's so cool. Now, can. Can that guitar be purchased? Like, is that a Bumblefoot signature guitar that can be purchased through the manufacturer? Yes, Vigier guitars, they do have distro in the US also. I mean, it's not as common because it takes them like a year to build it. They're aging the wood for four months and all this stuff. And, uh, they take a lot of, you know, it's more like a boutique company, but they wow. have single neck versions of this, wow. fretted and or fretless. Uh, so you could get, if you just wanted a fretless single neck, you can get that. And they do, they have the double neck that people can get. And people do get, surprisingly, there's awesome. a handful of people out there playing this thing. And it's really cool to see. Yeah. Very cool. Very Every cool. once in a while, I'll see like an Instagram story that I'm tagged in of someone playing their double neck fretted fretless. I'm like, yeah, just share it. That's awesome, man. That is so cool. Well, Bumblefoot, other than February 16th, with Art of Anarchy coming out with her brand new album, Let There Be Anarchy. Any other dates that your fans should be paying attention to? Oh, <laughs> um, I'll think of them all once we disconnect. Of course. Uh, that's the way it always is, course. right? I put you on the spot. I do have, I have a solo album, an instrumental solo album I've been working on. And that should be coming out, if not the end of this year, early next year as well. And I got some cool guests on it, a couple of guests. And so next year will be a lot of music coming out. Right on. Yeah. Right on. All right. Well, everybody, I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan here with Bumblefoot, one of the greatest guitarists on the planet Earth. And again, make sure you go check out this new music. Go check out that video, Vilified, if you haven't seen it already. It is amazing. Bumblefoot, thank you so much again, man. It's been awesome hanging out Thank with you. you. All right, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Thank Sky you. Jake, we're out.